What's up everyone, welcome to Capturing the Cosmos. My name is Colin Dane and today I'm going to show you my new telescope. I have been able to use this telescope for a few nights now for astrophotography and not for visual so I will only review its performance for astrophotography. So the main reason I bought this telescope is because of the shorter focal length. I already own a 715mm telescope but I really needed something shorter to capture some of the larger targets in the night sky and this is an excellent candidate. So let's get into the specifications of the Skywatcher EVOSTAR 72 ED. As the name implies, the aperture of the telescope is 72mm and the focal length of the telescope is 420 millimeters. This results in a focal ratio of f5.8, which is pretty decent for astrophotography. This telescope is a dublate apochromatic refractive telescope, which means it uses a two lens system to reduce chromatic aberration in your images or in your viewing. It comes with a dual speed focuser, which is actually pretty neat. It helps you achieve focus much more easily, and there's a locking screw on the bottom to lock your focus once you achieve focus. The telescope weighs just under 2 kilograms, which makes it a great telescope to travel with. It even comes with a nice aluminum suitcase. The case itself is a little bit flimsy, but it is filled with a shock absorbing foam on the inside. The most important thing is that the case protects your telescope when you travel around. And I think this case is sufficient to fulfill this purpose. The padding has some cutouts which you can use to store some of your eyepieces or other gear. So when I bought this telescope, I chose not to buy a field flattener right away and I did this for various reasons and first of all, I just wanted to review the performance of the telescope without any extra components. Second of all, now I have images before adding a field flattener. This way I can do a better review of the field flattener itself when I add it to the system. And finally, and this is maybe the most important reason, when I purchased this telescope it saved me 200 euros not to buy a field flattener. With that being said, I think the images came out pretty good, even though I was not using a field flanner. So let's have a look at the first image. So this image shows NGC 7000, which is located in the Cygnus constellation. It is better known as the North American Nebula, and that's because the shape actually resembles the continent of North America. I actually took this image in my backyard with my DSLR, which is a Canon 800D. I used an astronomic CLS clip-in filter to reduce the light pollution because I live in a very heavily light polluted area, and I have to suppress that as much as I can. And as you can see in this image, the stars near the corners are slightly elongated and slightly out of focus. This is caused by the field curvature of the telescope. So what happens is the focal plane of your telescope is actually slightly curved and you have a straight sensor. So parts of your sensor are not in the focal plane of your telescope. You can correct this with a field flanner, like I said before, but I did not purchase one to observe this effect and see how bad it actually is. So it took me three different nights to image this and I encountered different problems while imaging this and this has nothing to do with the telescope, it's just my own mistakes. Uh, the first night I forgot to enable dithering. Uh, my polar alignment was good though, but you can actually see that everything is aligned pretty neatly. During my second night of imaging I couldn't get my polar alignment right because I couldn't level my mount. 
tripod of my mount has a stripped screw hole, so I'm unable to adjust the height of the leg. And I'm looking to buy a new one soon, but this can be very annoying at times. For my third and last night of imaging, I hadn't touched the tripod at all, so I still had to deal with the issues of the mount not being completely leveled. And added to this, I had major issues with my guiding this night, which caused nearly every sub to have elongated stars because my uh, guiding in my right ascension was not completely correct. So all these things uh, affected my final result of this image. Uh, you can still slightly see some signs of the faulty RA guiding. Uh, it's not really visible when you look at the whole image though, so that's nice. A little bit of walking noise is also visible in the image and that's probably because of the lack of differing in the first night. So despite everything I am quite happy with this result, which is about 7 hours of data collected with the bad subs already sorted out. I didn't want to throw away everything from my last night of imaging to reduce the walking noise resulting for not having differed in the first night of imaging. So let's have a look at the second image. This is an image of IC5070, also known as the Pelican Nebula. For this image I used my dedicated astronomy camera, which is the ZWO ASI 1600mm Pro, with a set of narrowband filters uh, by ZWO. And I have processed the data to make a so-called false color image of the, uh, using the Hubble palette. The Pelican Nebula is actually located right next to the North American Nebula, and as you can see, the image I took is a little bit smaller than the one I took of the North American Nebula, and this is because the sensor size of the ZWO ASI 1600NM Pro is actually a little bit smaller than the sensor size of my Canon 800D. The projected image of your telescope is always the same size, and if you use a smaller sensor, you can only capture a smaller portion of this projected image. As I said before, this projected image is slightly curved, so using a smaller sensor also means that the effects of the field curvature is less pronounced. This goes in both ways, so if you use a full frame camera with a lot larger sensor than I used in both of these images, the effects of your field curvature will be a lot more pronounced, a lot more visible. Anyways, you can actually see this in both of my images, because the ZWO camera has a smaller sensor size, you can actually see that the stars in the corners are less elongated than in the image for my DSLR and that the focus is better throughout the entire image. This image was actually taken over three nights. Uh, the first night I captured my hydrogen, the second night I captured my sulfur and the last night I captured my oxygen. Uh, I processed this a while ago and I'm actually quite stoked that I can uh, finally show it to you guys. The only thing I had problems with using this telescope was getting my 1600mm in focus. I surely addressed this in the video where I make a Batinov mask for this telescope, but basically I have this large extender and it wasn't enough to get my camera in focus, so I had to add more distance. And what I did was using my ZWO Canon adapter in combination with my T2 ring to achieve the correct distance. I did not really have any problems getting my DSLR in focus with this telescope, but I did have to use the uh, same extender to reach the focal plane. Please note that this telescope does not come with any added accessories except for the suitcase, so any extenders or stuff you have to buy them uh, separately. And what I personally think is that Skywatcher just assumes that anyone imaging using this telescope will buy a field flattener which adds extra distance, uh, which will probably make it easier to get your camera in focus. Personally, I think that the images taken with my 1600mm are pretty good without using a field flattener, but for the image taken with my Canon, it's on the verge of being too distracting, uh, so I will probably order a field flattener soon. Probably make that most definitely. I will most definitely order a field flattener soon, so I can show you guys how these images will actually improve if you buy the dedicated field flattener. Overall, I think this is a great telescope for people who just start in astrophotography. The shorter focal length is very forgiving and personally I started with 715mm 
which caused me a lot of frustration at times and I wish I would have purchased a shorter focal length when I just started out. So this is basically what I should have bought instead of my uh, reflector telescope. And I think you can really see how forgiving this telescope actually is because I ran into a lot of issues while imaging the North American Nebula. But the final result is still pretty decent in my opinion. If I was using a longer focal length, the data was not usable at all and that means I just wasted 3 nights. So I'm glad I used this telescope, not something else for those 3 nights. Because now actually I have something to show instead of just data which I can throw away. Anyways guys, that's it for this video. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. This way you can stay updated when I post something new. And you can join me next time when I'm capturing the cosmos.